Um, but before we go into the individual uh, segments, country and Jeff, you know, let's talk a little bit about the realities of working from home and now. More and more companies are saying you have to do it. Uh, for example, uh, Facebook yesterday announced that um, they are expecting their employees to be continuing working from home all the way up until July 2021. In fact, they're even putting in some money into the account of every single employee that has to be working from home. I think something about a thousand bucks um, for you to set up your work from home uh, yes. system. So that's you know a company like Facebook. Yeah. And a lot of other companies are also doing the same. In Malaysia, for example, I know that Petronas uh, is expecting a big chunk of their workforce to be working from home at least until the end of the year. Well, at least that's what my all my yeah. friends and my colleagues in, in, in Petronas is telling me. So it's a reality. Yes. So it's not for everyone, but it is um, the demand is exacerbated by what we have faced in COVID-19. How do you guys view the current arrangement uh, from companies in working from home? Who's first? You first? Uh, to, perhaps you want to, ladies first. It's all <laughs> optics, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, if you look at uh, the comp with the, the coronavirus and with people trying not to go out without their face masks and uh, trying social distancing, which means traveling is going to be really hard. You have to do work from the house and you have to make it work for you. When I started working uh, in 2000, in the year 2000, no, not many people actually worked from home. And I had a tough time because a lot of my friends would ring me up and say, where are you? Are you trading today? No, I'm working. Where are you? I'm at home. Oh, so you're not working. I am working. And so it was really hard pressed for me at that time to tell them that you could work from home and run a business very, very successfully. But now it is so vital to stay at home because you not only have to protect yourself, but you have to protect your children. And don't forget, if schools are going to send homework from a school, you need to supervise unless you have somebody very clever to supervise your children and do their homework. Mm. If not, uh, how will you even manage? So this is a new norm for everybody. And uh, everybody is clamoring to see how they can do it as well as you, as they can. But it can be done. It is not impossible. Mm -hmm. So for, 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 for yourself, you've been, um, you've actually been working from home uh, for quite some time now. Nearly this 20th office. year. Yes, this is the 20th year. 20th year. And why do you personally choose working from home as the mode that works for you on a regular basis? Well, let's put it this way. I lost my mother-in-law, whom I loved dearly and who managed the house from the day I got married for 28 years. And when she died, uh, I just couldn't bear the thought of going out. And uh, my children were also out of uh, the home. And I decided I needed to work from home. And that's how it started because I had an empty nest syndrome because with the kids, kids out, my husband and I were the only ones at home. So I felt if I worked from home, at least I was there. If I'm not training, I was there at home when my husband came back home for lunch, being a busy physician. So it, it, it suited me brilliantly. But at that time, we didn't have so much of intellectual intelligence like IT. I mean, we had the email and things. I needed a fax machine. I needed a proper telephone. I needed a landline and uh, uh, even the iPhones weren't so brilliant at that time. We couldn't take photographs. We had to do so much, uh, you know, by fax. And the clients would demand that everything should be done quickly and sent. So we depended on the postal services. We depended on emails came a whole lot later. So, and they didn't trust emails. So we had to fax things. There's so much of digitalization in the world has made life so easy for us. So if you are going to set up an office, you have to look at your home. You have to look at the size of the family you have. You have to see what kind of um, space, let's put it a space. You're lucky to have a room. If you don't have a room, 
you need a small space. Mm. Find a corner, a quiet corner. You can actually put cardboard around the corner and tell the kids, mm. okay, this is mom's space. Or this is dad's space. This is our work space. Make it your own. Yeah. Decide how you want to, whether you want a desktop or a laptop or whether you want to uh, make it your own. I mean, put some, uh, you know, put some papers and pencils and uh, everything else. Have some make, it into, make it into like a, a, a proper office. A yeah. proper office. What you would do at home, what you would do in the office. Make it at right. home. And you need to tell your kids, this is your space. Right. And this, yeah, you know, we'll, we will go into the final details in a second. But now I want to go to, to Zeph. Um, sure. So Zeph. If we, if we look at the, um, the state of the economy right now, especially um, for a country like Malaysia, where more and more um, businesses, a lot of people working uh, right now are working in sectors that are knowledge driven, that are service driven. So not necessarily doing things or making things, yeah? especially in the urban centers in KL. In fact, there was a report uh, recently uh, that was published um, by Job Trade. There was a survey that they did where the top five industries requiring the employees to work from home are insurance or pension funding, yeah. Yeah. information technology, education, property development, as well as banking. So a lot of companies that are information heavy are now more open to having their employees working from home. And I'm sure Google is one of them. Yeah, I think it's a very privileged position. You know, I'm, I'm fully aware that there are many uh, people, some of them, you know, my friends as well, who aren't uh, as uh, lucky or you know the industries haven't adapted to a level where it's comfortable enough to run it uh, you know from home um, security obviously is one of the key concerns right we, even within tech there are certain uh, areas of technology that you just simply have to be on site right I, I would for example use call center as an example or you're doing product development frequently these things don't allow for you to work from home so there's always this um um you know the you know the the option to do it is great but some industries just aren't able to uh at, at google we're, you know you mentioned just now you know most folks are kind of ready uh, at least until year end most of uh, big tech is ready until middle of next year i mean it's the same case with google we're pretty much i am pretty much resigned or rather um, I'm going to celebrate the fact that I'm going to be working from home until at least July of 2021. Uh, and yeah, they've, you know, uh, allocated, you know, a, a certain stipend for me to, you know, go ahead and consider buying some equipment. So a big monitor is kind of a, a oh, thing. Wow. Yeah, so and, and perhaps a decent microphone so that, you know, your audio comes across when it needs to come across. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> what we can see on screen right now. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that, um, that looks awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so clearly working from home, um, even though it's not for everyone, but you know, for those that are working from home, there are a lot of perks, right? Uh, especially the fact that you know, for example, let's take that for example, you are actually investing in your own stuff. So this is you're going to basically home improvement, but it's home office improvement. So there are lots of um, uh, uh, of positives there, and for Puan Sri, um, I know your son, uh, and he is probably you know one of the most tech savvy people I know. So I know oh, yeah. that the setup that you have is ace. Yes, it's absolutely. absolutely, absolutely. But let's not forget the fact that there are also many distractions oh, oh. working from home. For me personally, it's the pets. I have four cats at home, and they love and their favorite place in the world is on my keyboard without a doubt and, and they demand attention and then for some people it's the fact that there's a fridge around the corner and you have to go and visit the fridge and see what do i want to snack on every 10 minutes or so or the fact that the bed and the sofa is just so beckoning to you the threats are real right it's i'm not imagining this no you're not imagining it you have to be so disciplined it's not easy to be in the house and to run, run an office when you know you can get up, walk out, uh, watch TV and take a break at, at the oddest of time. But the thing is, the thing is, you save, there's so much of benefits to working from the house. You don't have to be stuck in a traffic jam. You don't have to take a cab. You don't, don't even need a car. Because if I'm training, I take a cab because my car is parked and I'm paying parking fees. 
So all I do is to take a cab and take a cab back. It's a no brainer. But I have to be so disciplined if I want my clients to respond to me and to give me work. And if you've got a boss who's difficult, and you know, if he gives you deadlines, can you imagine he sends you an email and you're not there to respond to the email immediately? You're slacking. Don't forget, we all don't understand time, uh, work ethics, for, as far as time is concerned in Malaysia. I know when I tell people, 8.30 to 4.30 or 5 is work. 8.30 doesn't mean 8.30 you come to work, go for breakfast and then come at 9.30. That doesn't mean. And then you just leave at 5. It doesn't mean that. 8.30 means you go to work at 7.30 or 8, have your breakfast and be at the table at 8.30. So you set your parameters at home. Now, if I'm going to drive my husband to work, which I always do, I will know initially he would leave work by 8. So we leave home at 7.30, which means I have to be dressed. Now, when I say dress, I, I mean dress. You don't get to work in a home office in your pajamas. That's not working. You have to be disciplined to feel that you're going to work. Because so what's the logic you're... there? If I may just interject. Yeah. So what's the logic there? Because if you're at home, the idea is, you know, you get to be comfortable working from home. If nobody's yeah. going to see you. No, but you don't need to. Uh, well, okay, I'm always in a sari when I go out. You don't need to get into a sari. You could get into pants and shirt. But if you don't dress up, I mean, if you don't get into proper pants and shirt, wash your face, uh, you know, powder it and get to work, what if your clients call you? Or now with FaceTime, Mm -hmm. I don't think your client wants to see you in your pajamas. Yeah, you may want to also invest in like uh, good lighting as well, right? Because it, kind of comp it kind of compensates for yeah. maybe, you know, you're not having enough time in the morning. I, you know, I personally get into a routine as well. I yeah. do want to shower. I do want to kind of put on yeah. office clothes, even though you yeah. don't necessarily have to put on a tie, but you definitely want to be in you the right to... mindset as well. Because, you know. Uh well, you, you put yourself in the right mindset, right? That's it. That's what it's, I remember the first day when I started my office and I got dressed and my husband said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to work. He said, what do you mean you're going to work? Uh, are you training? Today? I said, no, I'm going to my office. He said, but your office is at the house. I know, honey, I'm going to work. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and so, yeah, which is you know absolutely true. Um, it, it, it is about the mind. It, it's about the mindset. Yes. It's about the mind frame, and it's about discipline. At the end of the day, it's about the discipline that you mentioned earlier. Uh, for all of you that just joined us, uh, thank you so much for um, joining us in our workshop. Now, I would like to invite um, our um, our attendees to send us your questions. If you have any questions about how to increase your productivity, or if you have any questions at all about perhaps the tools uh, that you could use. Uh, working from home, do send it to us in the chat. Uh, mark your question as a question and we will pick it up and we will flash it. Uh, also, if you want to ask a question on camera, we are more than happy to do that as well. All you need to do is at the very uh, top of your screen, you will see a request to speak um, a logo um, on the right side of your screen at the top. Right next to the clock, there is a request to speak a button. So go ahead and press that and um, you know we will be more than happy to have you on screen uh, asking a question to either point or also to Zeph. Um, Zeph, um, so I mentioned tools. Uh, it's already tough enough yeah, for people to be working with maybe, I don't know, I, I receive maybe on average between 70 to 100 emails a day. And that's already quite something to juggle. And now we are saying we also have tools to, for you to add on to that um, because then these tools are supposed to increase the productivity. Um, how are the tools that we would like to use working from home any different from the tools that we will be using if we were to be working in the office? Uh, I think it has to do with degrees of escalation. Uh, and let me, let me illustrate that, right? So somewhere in the last 10 years or so, we've kind of gotten into this groove, right? where you know when email became pervasive you kind of realize oh okay it's a good work tool then when people started smsing you 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 realize that hey this is a little bit more urgent than an email right and then if they were to pick up the phone and call yeah. you you know 
that you know it's really serious right so that sort of convention i think has kind of dictated the way that most people work from home email is more work uh, messaging or sms or you know slack or any of those internal tools would denote like an escalated state but if you get that phone call you know things are kind of hitting crisis mode or, or challenge mode right so so that i think uh, enables people to kind of configure their tools right and if you want to work and plan your day out you use any calendar tool uh, and then you know within the calendar tool there's usually like a task tool as well right and then these days you can share your calendar you can share your tasks and then you know routine stuff is sort of pre-scheduled uh, whereas you know external sort of off tangent stuff you you adhere to this level of uh, escalation, which I think for the most part works for many, many industries. So, you know, if you really need to reach me, you know, pick up the phone and, you know, I know it's urgent from Dino. <laughs> <laughs> right, understood. Okay, so, so I'm going to I'm gonna release you for a second, Seth, because I'm going to focus on front screen right now. Um, stay with us, Seth. We will come back to you in a second because I want to understand, um, you know, you've got a slide for us to, uh, to take through. So um, I will come to you in a second, but now point three. So you sent us some material, which I think is gold because um, it is basically a document full of logic because it tells us the pros for employers, the pros for employees, the yes. cost for employers, the cost yes. for employees. So let's, um, if I can ask my colleague Amy to bring that up right now, um, yes. I would like you to take us um, through some of the key points that you have shared with us here. Go on. Okay. Okay. Right now, now uh, for the employer, basically the fact that they haven't sacked you means that this industry can work from home, right? And that's a big, it's a big plus, you know. And uh, you see, like I'll give you a simple example: the civil servants and the teachers uh, were on MCO, and they were expected to send notes to the kids by, by email or whatever. But they found out that some of the the, the lower uh, the B40 section kids didn't have internet and didn't have. But some of the teachers were really good. They actually, uh, you know, told the kids, you know, the phoned them and said, "Look, uh, I have got the notes. You look at this page and look at this page." You know, they were really good. But the parents were reluctant for the teachers to send notes for the kids. So look at the look at the way we need to educate people but for the employer i mean let's face it if you're staying at home you're not going to get sick so it lowers their medical expenses there's a lower turnover of staff and then there's nobody complaining about someone coming late to work you use technology uh, better so and and there is greater productivity if people are disciplined now let's good let's look at the negatives for the employer as far as the negatives for the employer, actually, it's both employer and employee. They don't have teamwork. You can't have meetings. That means you have to have Zoom meetings. And, and there's no uh, camaraderie within the organization. Again, you have you don't see your staff working. There's some, some bosses don't trust your staff. Hmm. And uh, there's some staff don't trust your boss. So that's the other problem. And then again, how do you monitor performance? How do you know that somebody is working? You're going to get, uh, you have to give bonuses at the end of the year. And then again, some staff will say, I don't have proper internet service. So again, staff development will be compromised. There are a lot of negatives for the employer too. But I think the positives for the employee, if you would move the slide one, one more. Now, you, if you can organize yourself with the employer, your work schedule, that means you fix, fix the time. You tell your boss what time you're available till what time. But you have to make yourself available at that particular time. So organize your flexi hours. You save on your travel, you save on your uh, petrol, you save on um, time, which means you don't have to get up at 5.30, cook a meal for the children and then leave at 6.45 because of the traffic jam. You actually can get up at 6 or 7 because if you are going to be having... So in that way, you have a lot of uh, pluses here. The no distractions, you have no breakfast with your staff, no staff meetings, uh, no catching at the 
uh, at the common room. I mean, again, you save on wear and tear of your clothes. You don't have to buy clothes. You don't need to do shopping. <laughs> you, need, you need to take care of your time management, but then you will manage your time because your boss is you or will bully you if you don't. Now, the negatives for the employee will be, again, you need so much of willpower, discipline, with all the distractions that come under your way. Now, you need to, if, if, if you ever, anyone taught you time management, this is the time you need. You need to, you need to tap. You don't get caught when your boss calls you. Uh, you're on your own time. You can, you can work slowly, but you can miss deadlines. Again, you need a good internet system. You don't want at the range stopping your internet system or suddenly nobody can contact you. And that's not going to be good for you. I know some some of the people I talked to told me that their bosses did not respect their office hours. And they called them at any time, uh, whenever they felt like it, and or sent them a message or if they sent a request for something to be done, the boss replied late and the deadlines were over. And the last one is, you can get it. And let's go on to, it, 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 can we stop here? Yeah, sure. uh, Do you know, and uh, what else do you want them to do? Okay. Shall I continue? Uh, no, no. I, I wanted to ask you, you, you mentioned just now about um, <laughs> the environment, right? Um, working from home, the environment itself. Um, yeah. It was interesting that I also read a couple of articles how there are people who are actually finding it difficult working from home because you don't have the office chatter. You don't hear the printers going off. Absolutely. You don't hear the coffee machine going Absolutely. off. Absolutely. So that you actually have soundboards available to download for free on the internet right now Absolutely. just for you to feel like you're working in the office when in actual yeah. fact you're or, or you or you can also have like water cooler chats which you know have sprouted out in many many offices you know so you you have a permanent chat that's always uh -huh. on okay. for anybody to join if they miss the water cooler chat there so many departments and offices have actually seen it fit to just leave a permanent and by the way uh from my experience uh these chats go on even after office hours so that's, that's this this element of like social interaction as well that most people miss, right? And you know, and, and you know, it's 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 on the resources that's already for the most part being provisioned and paid for. So why not get some uh, well-being and you know not kind of miss your office colleagues as well. The other thing also I find the other thing also I I, I do miss is I I find that I don't have friends. Uh, you know, to speak of because I work from the house. Yeah. And uh, you don't do your chats and you don't have your lunch breaks or you don't have your tea break. I don't have friends. So my daughter tells me, oh, God, mom, you have no friends. Where are your friends? <laughs> and, you know, I'm... But the thing is, at some point of time, you will get comfortable with what you're doing. And uh, you will have friends who do the same thing as you do. And you will eventually meet and make good friends but uh, it can be hard work yeah it, it, it can really be hard work so hard now work. that you mentioned friends yeah i want to go into uh, the next next sub section which is communication not just communication with your colleagues but also with your employers and more importantly the communications that you need to have with your clients yes because yes. you we are now we have now taken away the face-to-face -face communication so we are now relying solely on what we are doing right now, which is talking oh, sure. to a camera, to a screen. Yeah. Yeah. Now, how do we ensure that the productivity is still going to be there, number one? And number two, that the impact of the communication is going to be the same. Sales, for example. So are there any tips that both of you would like to share? Who, who wants to go first? Jeff, why don't you start? Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, I mean, I, you know, I was speaking just now about the tools of the trade. Uh, I guess we could kind of continue uh, with, with that. Uh, in terms of like the measurement and your output, I think those continue to be the same. For the most part, the, any adjustment is actually probably with regards to how uh, the pandemic has affected like business uh, as usual, right? But in terms of like the tools itself and the way that we measure our performance, that stays the same. 
uh, within you know Google and in so far as my experience tells me, we've also tried to continue for the most part the town hall sort of gatherings that we typically would do. Uh, luckily, we're still able to do that in a virtual way. Uh, and most tools actually now either allow for up to a few hundred uh, of these um, town halls to uh, have like a few hundred in attendance. Or if you get to a stage where you need more, you can just live stream it and people can kind of just probably go to a live YouTube link and so on. Okay. But I think the most important um, aspect of working remotely is probably the empathy that you want to give your coworkers. Uh, I think it's something that you want to give yourself as well. But at the same time, you know, I've been in so many calls where, you know, it's very clear that pets are jumping onto keyboards. Like, you, you know, uh, kids are running into the view. Yeah. Uh, you know, actual deliveries are being made. You know, remember when we had to actually <laughs> yeah. accept yeah. like, you know, right. groceries and food. To the, so there's this going to be all of those distractions. But if you have enough empathy for the other person and they have it for you, I think, you know, everybody just kind of reminds everybody else that this is indeed a special time, a historically special time. Absolutely. And we shouldn't have expectations that things can be as usual, even when, you know, the miracle medical, uh, medical sort of cure is, is discovered, it's still going to take some time to get that out to people. So, you know, a little bit of empathy kind of probably should be able to make this world a better place. Yes. Uh, well, along, along with empathy, I would like to add in the sense that when you're talking to your bosses, people need to watch their tone of voice and you know, your irritations, your body language, irrespective whether you're on camera or whether you are face to face, it's there. If you're angry, if you walk into your in front of your camera, you walk into the of your office space, that is your home space, and you're angry, that will show on your face. And uh, when your boss is talking to you, you know, you're curt. So this is where your social etiquette and this social etiquette in the business world comes into play more so with your clients because some clients can be this it's no more face to face if you're meeting a client uh, online they don't want a long drawn out stuff of what you can do you need to tell them very succinctly what you are what you're capable of doing and you have to be so polite you have to be you know the the the, the nuances of your tone the way you explain things. And if you don't understand, you have to ask them what they want to do. These are clients. They think they think you know what they want. But if you don't, you need to ask. So it is not like seeing face to face where you're taking down notes. You're on FaceTime. So the ethics and etiquette of business is so much enhanced when you're online rather than when you are at a meeting. Mm. But and you know, you mentioned tone. Uh, it's one thing to be talking um, on camera to your colleagues and your clients, yes. but it's also another thing when you are communicating on WhatsApp. Oh on yes, WhatsApp. Ab absolutely. <clears throat> Excuse me. So sometimes um, the, the the tonality is completely lost in a text message. It's How like emails. About this. Yeah. No, if on a WhatsApp, I still don't understand. The first time I got a message from WhatsApp, somebody sent me C U at uh, three, and I said, what, "What does C mean? What does U mean?" You know, and then I had to ask my son. I said, "What does this mean?" He said, "Mom, it means C U S E E." Uh, y O U at three. Why can't you just write down S E E Y O U at three? Uh, oh, this is short form, you know. But this is ridiculous. But I don't. I still today, my WhatsApp messages are in full and in proper English. So whether you say it in Malay, in English, in Chinese, or in Tamil, write it properly so that people understand what your message is. If you send a message that people don't understand. And look out for mistakes and don't send it to the wrong person. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to guess you're not a fan of emojis, yeah, point three. I, 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 don't, I don't send emojis at all because I don't understand what they mean. Frankly. I'm too old for all this. <laughs> like, you oh, much prefer exact words that mean exact things. Absolutely. If somebody says, Mrs. Ampi, I want to see you at four o'clock, I want them to say, Mrs. Ampi, I want to see you at four o'clock. <laughs> 
<laughs> I can understand the C business. I still don't understand the C and the U. And uh, I'm sorry. I, I, maybe I'm just old fashioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been taught English properly. <laughs> <laughs> but also, you know, when, when you are communicating um, in such a way, um, the, you actually highlighted one thing that's um, quite important, which is uh, making sure that you send the message to the right people but also sending the right message yes. to the right people. Yes. Now, when you are speaking in a group, all right, yes. it's yes. easy for you to direct your, um, whatever that you're saying, your message to the particular person that it is being directed to yes. uh, because you are in a physical setting. But let's That's say, right. for example, if we are having a group meeting, yes. are there any um, best practices that one should have in presenting their points or in presenting their argument um, because the limitation is that when everybody speaks at the same time online it just goes nothing completely happens. nothing happens mm. everything goes crazy you somebody has to monitor this and if you want to butt in you have to wait for someone to finish a sentence and then say may i butt in here because I would like to suggest something. You need to be, that's where your politeness comes in. I mean, you have to be so careful about not offending somebody by finishing their sentences or cutting halfway and saying, oh, um, uh, no, 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 no. I don't agree with that statement. You wait for the person to finish and then say, may I, may I butt in here? And then wait for the moderator or whoever is uh, having the meeting they would say, okay, so and so, carry on. The thing is, when you have, when your physical presence is not there and you are like, like I'm seeing all our faces, I'm seeing two faces, you know, I'm seeing your face. This, say, Jeff, I'm seeing your face here. We are not able to touch each other. We are mm -hmm. actually online. So if we interrupt each other, you lose, a person loses its trend of thought and you try, tend to lose what you're trying to say. And it's also very rude. Mm -hmm. So one has to be, one has to be so thoughtful about what you're going to say, when you're going to say, how you're going to say, and uh, prepare your notes properly so that you know exactly what you're going to say and how you're going to say. And if somebody doesn't agree with you, it's okay. You can say, um, well, I'm sorry you feel this way, but I feel very strongly about this. And that's mm. fine. But if you are in a meeting where you are seeing everybody, you can fight. Mm. Yeah, I've, I found that in, in my meetings, you know, this, the uh, people who prefer the verbal sort of uh, cues. Yes. Yes. And then there are also people who just interject with the text, which I think is a great new dimension yes. of like, uh, like, you know, meeting post-COVID. Because, you know, I, I have uh, heard it said that it actually is very much more conducive to introverts because they can still get their points across. It's just that they take the time to type it out. Um, <laughs> but, you know, they, it, it, they type it out, it comes out, it becomes a, a point. And then if okay. people need um, a little bit more elaboration, then it's like, hey, would you, would you care to expand on that? Yeah. So it gives uh, people who may not necessarily be the most extrovert yeah. to still get their points across. But, yeah, you're right, Pansin, you know, you know we... we speak of the moderator or at least the person who convenes the meeting, they need to sort of be mindful about these things and yeah. then keep people in uh, and also use tools like taking a poll and so on. So on top of the text, uh, you can also do polls and stuff, which actually is way more powerful than face-to-face. Oh, yeah. 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 But then, uh, uh, Jeff, know. one more thing. Just one minute. Uh, Jeff, uh, you yeah. have to be very tech savvy, you know, then they really have to be very tech savvy because if they are going to key in a message when 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 you object to some somebody, I mean, if I'm having a if I'm having a meeting, a board meeting, or if yeah. I'm having a meeting, yeah. I'm not tech savvy. I'm not so quick in texting. Yeah, so that's where the short forms uh, come in. So that's see you, true. yeah. <laughs> okay, I get you. I get you. <laughs> okay, it's good. But, uh, whatever that we have this discuss actually addresses one of the questions that was sent in by. Uh, one of our attendees, Linda, which is how to deal with interruptions and distractions. So not only can you deal with interruptions uh, verbally, but uh, as what Zeph says, you can actually also do it um, via text, which is good. Uh, we've got a lot of questions that are coming in, actually. Uh, okay. We will get to them in a second. But now, Zeph, I want to go to you. Um, sure. This is where we talk about setting up the perfect workspace. 
people think ayah never mind lah. You just take your laptop, sit on the sofa, and then that's it lah. Bob your uncle, you have a cup of coffee on your side, and that's it. That's, that's, that's when the distractions come. That's, that's when the distractions come. That's when ah. when your kid will come and upset your coffee and top tip your coffee over from the table, <laughs> and then you'll have your computer filled with coffee, and and then you know everything gets. Done over. Understood. Understood. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Zeph has got a model yeah. for uh, of his own workspace. So Zeph, do take us through it. We'd, we'd be more than happy to see. Oh yeah, yeah. Do you have a visual of that? Did I yeah. share that? I hope I did. I have, uh, the slide on right now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Thanks. I'm gonna wait for this. Ah, yeah, that's the oh, one. Yeah. That. So, so oh, that's wow. actually a that's actually a snapshot of my own uh, home workstation. I'm I'm kind of sitting on the chair uh, there, and yeah. it's something that. Yeah, and that's something that I kind of put together based on like specifications that you know we got from our tech team over at Google. Uh, so you know you want to keep the video conferencing uh, laptop or device sort of separate from your main work screen, which I think is something that we mostly mimic uh, in the office. So you want to get that going at home. Uh, that's like why? number one. Why? Why yeah. is there a need to keep it separate? Oh, because you want to be able to still look at the faces of people that you talk to, right? As opposed to uh, just looking, you know, at uh, like maybe a document that you're presenting. There are a lot of uh, non-verbals that you miss when you're presenting and you only see your slides, right? So you want to be able to keep a watchful eye on the room, as it were. So at, at the same time, you know, you can also have uh, like the ability to take notes on the other screen while you're maintaining this uh, grid view or individual sort of call. So. That's why we encourage people to have separate uh, video conferencing and main screens. Right. So the other thing, sorry, you were saying, you know. No, no, I said, yep, carry on. Okay, so the other thing is lighting, right? So lighting is kind of a big deal. So I have this uh, LED light that's able to mimic daylight. So oh. <laughs> if I if I happen to work uh, during, you know, dusk hours and you know, the lighting, you know, because you're so used to a certain level of lighting in the office, right? Which yeah. is like, you know, almost daylight. So you want to have that at home. So I've seen it fit to kind of uh, invest in an LED light that I can like tweak in and out. So if I were to make this brighter, it would be uh, more like a studio lighting, but you know, I have it a little bit dimmer now, uh, but you know, it gives you this uh, reprieve, I guess, from a bit of eye fatigue, especially in certain times of day after lunch, especially. So that's, that's kind of uh, crucial as well. Uh, and then the other thing I would say is like the, the ability to just kind of, you know, uh, re like, retract a little bit from your work desk and kind of walk around which i think is like super important uh in the office you can walk around and interact with people and go to the water cooler uh, at home you should probably still be able to walk around and interact with your family or neighbors uh, and then you can you know immediately come back but i have also seen people who set up offices in laundry rooms in storage rooms uh in closets whatever gives you that space delineation so that your family or the people that you stay with kind of respects that, I think it's like, you know, goal for working at home. Yeah. What are the perils of actually just maybe, maybe, you know, the, if you, if you do not have enough space in your home, for example, uh, and let's say you live in a one bedroom or in a studio apartment, mm. uh, is it really all that bad? Is it, is it better to, continue working from home in the limited space that you have, if that is the issue that you have, or is it better to pack your bags and go to a cafe and sit down and, and do it now that yes. you are in, in not such a restricted um, movement mode? I, I agree with that, actually. Yeah. If you are not super restricted, um, you know, unfortunately, at Google, we're not in that position. So we've, we're basically observing work from home, uh, you know, generally speaking for about you know two thirds or, or even more of our workforce so that's not an option for Google. but if you have the option of kind of going to a cafe and, and staying safe while doing that absolutely by all means especially if the cafe has better internet connectivity yeah that's right. yeah we, we have a com we have a comment actually that, that that sort of like resonates with that uh, from noreen over here she says that it is difficult when the mentality is still if you are not at the office you are not working <laughs> yeah, it's a it's it's a challenge, right? I mean, you know, it's a challenge. It's a challenge. I, yeah, I had a lot. Of, some had some industries are just a little bit more accepting of it than other industries, but I think you know the the reality of the world now 
means folks who may not be fully comfortable with it have to kind of come around and accept it, right? Because there's no way without you trusting your workers, are you able to kind of continue doing business as usual? So your insistence on doing, you know, outdated or archaic ways of, of, of working and managing people is probably not going to be good for your business in the long run. Okay. One of the only uh, industries, one of the most difficult industries to uh, to do online uh, work is uh, is hospitals, doctors. It is so so difficult for a doctor to examine patients online. It's so hard because even the GP, you need to tell the GP you have the temperature, which means the patient needs to have a a temperature gauge to a thermometer. The patient needs to tell the doctor, look, I have, uh, this is my temperature. I'm running a cold. I have fever. You know, I'm not well. I'm beginning to cough. It's so difficult because a doctor needs his stethoscope. You know, and if you are a lung physician, my doctor is a lung physician and she despairs seeing patients online. She says, oh God, mom, it's a nightmare. But what to do? As a PSA, you have to, you have to. So there are some industries which are very, very difficult. Okay. The other difficulty is about timing. Uh, the reality is when you're working from home, it's almost like you are at work all the time. The emails are coming in at all hours of the day and the messages uh, and the communication with your team and especially your boss, it could happen at whatever time, all the time, every time. Um, how can you play a role yourself to observe a more sane working hour? You need to tell your boss, boss, after six, I'm offline. Before you continue, Pansri, let me ask Zef. Zef, yeah. is there an option for you to say that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, I was, absolutely. I was going to say. I was gonna how say. would you go home? Come on, if you are in the office, how would you go home? I, I, would, say, home? I would say technologically, you could use things that unsync from your usual um, email, you know, that's a that's an option for Android phones. I'm pretty sure there is an option for iOS devices as well. So at particular times of day, you can set your phone to stop checking work emails, right? And then I go back to this escalation of importance uh, sort of uh, standard behavior that we've kind of seen in the last decade or so, right? So even if you don't see your emails, if emergency or urgent stuff comes in, it'll come in through WhatsApp, it'll come in through phone calls. But you yourself are sparing your well your well being from being constantly checking emails when you unsync. Yes. Right. Uh, Jeff, you're absolutely right. Let me tell you, <laughs> I know what it is to start working, and I'm interested in one of the uh, training programs I'm doing, and I'm working. You know, I I started about eight thirty eight eight thirty. I stop for lunch. There's no breaks in between. I won't even get up to go and get a cup of. Uh, cup of tea you know and then i have lunch and then i'm on again at 2 2 30 i go until 5 have a cup of tea come back and work it's it's a nightmare and my husband would be yelling at me and he says honey do you think it's don't you think there's a time to stop oh yeah yeah i'm not, i'm nearly done i'm nearly done the thing is and then i'm awake at five because i suddenly think oh my god have i done this so you can go nuts doing this. You can go crazy. But if you don't manage your time, I have to tell myself, even till today, I have to tell myself, okay, enough. I, I'm done. Even if it is not done, I just leave it on the table and say, I'm done. Yeah, or, or have two separate phones, right? One for work and one for personal. That can help too. Now, now let me throw a, a spanner in the works here. How do we do positive showboating then because at the end of the day you want your bosses you want your employees to see that you're doing work see that you're doing work well so if you're at the office it's literally you know like that but when you're at home they don't see you working and that's yes, the risk i i i hope that's nobody that's ever that's yeah that's i hope nobody ever has to do showboating though exactly. so that's that, that's my own personal point of view exactly but for me, but, but, but for folks who've uh, been using email for a while like you know most of us there is this thing called scheduled email right so you can you can still showboard by showing that you're sending stuff out at top that's which, terrible that's which terrible. yeah which is which is horrible because nobody believes it anyway these days because everybody knows you can always oh, i just i probably schedule that stuff so yeah so we're the not, thing is, we're not the thing is this. 
if you are disciplined and if you've been a disciplined worker and you your boss knows that you work hard and that you are disciplined despite all the distractions you have they will understand i have had very few unreasonable bosses in fact i only had one in all my work career i only had one unreasonable boss but then uh i work i, mean, I always tell my the people i train i tell my participants don't think your bosses are idiots they know who works and who doesn't they know so you actually can tell your boss boss it's past six i have to manage my kids i have to cook a meal you know if you have to if mothers i mean not everybody has a luxury of health and i know some mothers get up at five o'clock to cook three meals because the kids are perpetually hungry mm. you know it's hard it's hard work yeah so showboating is one thing but also it's about measuring productivity we have a question that came in from one of our um and these um, Muhammad Hafizuddin is the same and he's asking how do we measure productivity? Oh, good so this is actually measurable productivity versus you know showboaty productivity. Okay, let me let me let me try answering that. Um, how do you measure productivity when you're working at the house? Let's say the boss sends you uh, something to do and he gives you a deadline. And he tells you, I want it within the day. Now, whether you do it uh, efficiently, effectively, efficiently, without mistakes, and you send it within the day, then you have achieved uh, your productivity. Because he is not sending emails back to you saying, what about this, what about this, what about this? You missed out this, you didn't deal with this, you didn't deal with that. Then that shows that you have not treated what he expected now if your boss tells sends you an email and you're not sure ask ask questions because i i remember the first time my boss asked me to buy him a meal when we were going out to eat he said buy me lunch and so i bought him you know rice and you know chapan as that boy the rice and fish a uh, couple of vegetables and i came back and i gave it to him he said oh dear fish you know i said you didn't tell me but it was my mistake i didn't ask so the next time he asked me and I said, okay, what do you want to, what do you want to eat? He said, oh, rice. I said, yeah, rice. And what? Fish or chicken? He said, ah, go away. I said, fish or chicken? And then he said, ah, chicken. <laughs> I said, uh, uh, Kang Kong or Sawi? And then he said, get out of my office, Mr. Sampi. I said, no, you tell me, Kang Kong or Sawi, I'm not leaving. Because if you're not specific, you're, you don't do the right thing and that lies, that's where the productivity lies. Right. So the onus is on you, right? The, the onus is on you. What does your what does your boss want? Okay. What about for um, for Google? Are there any trackable systems that you use? Yeah, yeah. As, as you know, we're like sticklers for measurement, right? So you typically in, in any line of work, in you know, whether you're an engineer or you're not an engineer, and of course in Google, if you're an engineer, it really is about your product enhancements and output and so on you know those have to be on track to that's how productivity is measured uh, but even if you're not an engineer you sort of sit down and prepare a three six months in advance a certain kpis or objectives that you are expected to uh, fulfill you know within your role and the job of you and your manager is to keep track of those to see if they're on track and if they're not and of course it doesn't mean that you you know you create goals that are easy to um, achieve right you create stretchy goals that you know you're not going to be able to fulfill 100 percent with ease so just so that you stretch yourself right so and and for the most part googlers are their own uh, most um uh, demanding uh, measurers so it's very rare that we ourselves would assign ourselves like you know cgpa 4.0 you know <laughs> i probably want to give myself like 2.5 and here is where i failed and you know generally most folks are, are very honest with themselves yeah, mm, yeah. The, uh, the you so this is one of the things that is actually included in the bundle that you sent me so um if i can get my colleague to uh, put up the um oh the the work from home so uh yeah. objectives and keep it maybe a bit beyond uh that link but it, it really is a resource for folks who wish to learn a little bit more about the tools that are available out there for working from home uh, and we also have a free app that you can download uh, it's called primer 
Uh, it's actually about a thousand plus lessons that you know uh, we've kind of put together uh, over at Google, and it teaches people skills from digital marketing to search trends and all the way to introductory stuff with regards to coding and stuff. So it's it's primer, uh, and it's in the link that I pre shared with you, and it's a free resource. Uh, anyone can uh, download it. So the um, the link, um, if you're um looking at your screen right now you will see on your right we've actually put it up uh it's actually a clickable link that you can go ahead and click and this gives you access to um, a library of resources um work from anywhere teach from anywhere learn from anywhere so these are the multiple areas um that might be of interest to you but also in there you will find a lot of tools that is possibly downloadable and you can and all for free all for free yeah. Great. That's great. That's uh, now, we have one more question, which I think this needs to be addressed because this question comes from Elena, and she was asking, how does working from home affect psychological health? What can employers do to make sure that people are staying focused, committed, and happy? And this goes hand in hand with um, uh, a comment I saw. Uh, there was a comment, yes from uh, Noreen uh, in the chat room that says, my most unproductive moment in uh, WFH is having to participate in large meeting groups via Zoom that last three hours or more mentally draining for me. Okay. Wow. Uh, uh, yeah, let me tell you something that I heard from a mother who said that uh, she was working from home and she was really happy to work from home. She's got a eight-year-old and a uh, four-year-old. And she said that because of the MCO, the four-year-old was normally very bright and chubby and it was uh, And so she said, what, what's wrong with you? And she went into the room and slammed the door. So the mother walked after her and uh, opened the door and said, why would you do something like this? She just threw something at the mother. And then she said, I had to sit them down and talk to them about why they cannot go out. I have another friend of ours who has traveled all over the world. He's, he's hardly, he's a very bright businessman who's hardly in Kuala Lumpur. He's traveled all over the world and he actually got very, very depressed. And he said, my God, um, is this going to be our lives? And, you know, it was very sad to see that mental health was a big issue, you know, and uh, people felt down. They said, oh, my God, I can't go out. I can't even, you know, and it's not that everybody doesn't have a house with a garden. You may live in a six bed, a six foot, 600 feet condominium, and you're stuck there with the tiniest balcony on the face of the earth. What do you do? You can't come out. What do you do? Don't, we don't, we actually underestimate. And the problem is, even when we have mental issues, nobody dares say that they have mental issues because if you go and see a psychiatrist, you are deigned insane, you know, which is so sad, you know. And uh, this is true in, in all Asian societies, I'd say, not just Malaysia, anywhere. It's only over in the Western world you can see a psychologist or you can see a psychiatrist. That's a good thing to do. That. But here, people are so frightened to say, I am depressed. I need to see someone. I need to talk to somebody. Maybe I need to take some some medicines. I don't know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. But I think people need to acknowledge that uh, this is a problem. Not only with adults, with children too. Yeah. I think I think people who have off days or holidays should take them, yeah. even if they feel like they, you know, oh, I'm not going to go anywhere. But I think it's really important because that off days are, you know, are your days, right? It's due to you. And, you know, even if you're not going anywhere, just staying at home, uh, mentally kind of, you know, being on holiday is very helpful for your long-term well-being. So, you know, don't feel like it's a waste to take those off days. Yeah. yeah, but then also don't forget, uh, don't forget it is hard uh, when, when there is a pandemic going on. It's really hard to go out or you know, to watch over your kids and 
to see that they are protected. It's really scary because I was just talking to my husband the other day and I was saying, even during the World War II, when 33 million people were killed, the borders were not closed. The borders were not closed. We are unable to hold each other, hug each other. We are unable to kiss our, our, our relatives. Everybody is practicing. So it's a terrible time to be living in this world. And I think we need to appreciate that. And I hope people appreciate how devastating it must be for children who live overseas and cannot come home. And yeah. for parents who cannot see their loved, their old, their, their, their parents. Mm. And for children not to see their grandparents and for grandchildren who don't understand why they can't see their grandparents. You know, it's a terrible, terrible time. Yeah, it is, yeah. Terrible and very testing time, especially yes. for the Absolutely, because, absolutely. Know, that was what our entire discussion is based on the fact that, you know, it is a, it, it, there's a paradigm shift. Uh, the need to excel at work has now shifted, it has pivoted to a, 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 a very digital first mentality. Yes. So that's the reality of it. Um, so on that note, I'd like to say a very big thank you to both of us to the Africa and also to you uh, for your time today. Um, I believe we, there is a way for us to share. Are we sharing the file that one can have sent uh, in the email? Okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm just double checking my colleagues. So uh, the emails or uh, all the um, resources that have been shared with us today uh, will be emailed out to the attendees. Um, so thank you very much for that. Also, at the same time, I just want to highlight a couple of our upcoming events uh, for you. We've got two webinars coming up next week, uh, one on Tuesday and one on Wednesday. So the sunny night team is depending on uh, our schedule right now. Uh, so on Tuesday, we've got robo-advisors helping you to invest your fair change. You know, it's all about investing. A lot of people, uh, you, they just don't know how to start investing. So this is yeah. a great way for you to start investing with the spare change in your bank account. When you use your bank card, the little, little change that has, um, you know, that round up. So for example, if you're buying a drink and it's costing you 80 cents, it rounds the system <laughs> to 3 ringgit. So 20 cents is invested. And you will see, this is literally where you will see where orang Melayu selalu kata kecil kecil lama lama jadi bukit. Lama jadi bukit, yeah. Mountain from a mobile home. <laughs> so that's exactly what we hope to be talking about. How do people get on robo investing? You don't want to miss out on this. We've got very interesting people coming to talk about this. And then on Wednesday, we are going to be talking about something a little bit more serious. Murongka mental, upper status anda. Okay. People are talking about mental health day and night now. Everybody is saying that it's prevalent, but not very often that you get to ask yourself, what is my own mental state? Yeah. What is the state of my own personal mental health? How does one test oneself uh, to understand the symptoms and also the possible causes? Um, and if you find yourself in a particular situation where your mental health is at risk, how do you get out of it? What are the remedies available for you? So these are the two um, sessions yes. that we will be having next week. Uh, so we hope everybody will come on board. And also um, on the author tab right now, I would like to invite you to please download the app on the app. Because the other year, the app. So point three and Jeff, thank you so much once okay. again. Pleasure. Uh, very, very um, insightful session. Um, I hope you are okay if anybody has further questions. Um, I'd like to invite our attention to send them to me and perhaps I can direct them to you if they want to. Absolutely. 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 Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So yeah. we hope to be seeing you again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we enjoyed it. Ja it was lovely meeting you, Jeff. Lovely as well. Thank you very much, you know. Thank you, Bastri. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Have a good Thank afternoon. You. Bye, guys.